Hey guys, what's up? Rob Adventures here. Welcome once again to my backyard. Today's video, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys my winter survival pack. I got this pack from Amazon. It wasn't anything special, just a $30 backpack. I think it was 30 or 40 liters. I actually forget. But it seems pretty good. I'll just do a quick little review right now. It does come with a waist strap here so it can rest on your hips and you can adjust it a bit. Although it's not padded so it's not anything special like a, a backpacking backpack, just something simple. I probably have it about 30 pounds or so. It seems pretty comfortable. I think I could walk for quite a ways with this. You can adjust it pretty easily by pulling these back here or by adjusting this right here so you can make it as comfortable as possible. Alright, what I'm going to do now, I have a poncho slash tarp here. I'm going to lay it out on the ground and do the backpack dump and show you guys what I got inside. Alright guys, without further ado, let's just go ahead and get started. Right away, I'll show you the canteen attachment I have here. Molly straps, it's pretty easy to hook up. Simple one liter BPA free canteen. And inside of this is cooking gear. Now it's kind of a pain to get out of here. I've seen other people with this exact same thing and they just pull it right out. So if you see my vlog video, you've probably seen me use this. This is just a little cup you can use to boil water. And here's a little pedestal for it. You can make a small fire underneath if you don't have any other uh, cooking gear. And last but not least, the lid. All right, the next attachments I have on here are some little side pouches, one here and one here. These are extra attachments I got. They're also Molly. All right, so on this one I have, it's a solar power flashlight and it's crank, no batteries. Crank it for about three minutes or just let it sit out in the sun for a while and you got a reusable flashlight. Next thing I got in here is just a simple little Gerber tool. It's always good to have one of these multi-tools. You got pliers, um, got a couple different knives, blades, screwdrivers. You never know when something like this will come in handy. The next thing I have is a life straw. You use this, it can pretty much filter out any sort of water so you can get, give yourself drinkable water. You use it just like a straw. You kind of submerge this end, dip it in and just suck like a straw. This is a handheld uh, chain, chainsaw for uh, cutting large logs or, or trees down if you have to. Has two handles here and you just kind of wrap it around what you need to cut and you, you pull back and forth. I haven't used this yet, but it has really good reviews, so one day I'll probably use it, I'm sure. Next with lighting is a headlamp. I think it's about 200, maybe 150 lumens. I've had this for a while, I forget. It uses AAA batteries, has a a straight beam and then a wide angle beam, also a red light. Because if you're in the dark and you need to be concealed, you don't want white light because people can see that for miles around. If you still need to see in the dark, you use the red light. Here we have some electrical tape and some little Gorilla tape just for repairs for tents, tarps, or whatever. Also may be useful for a tying logs or sticks together for making a shelter. Okay, the next thing we have here is a uh, little potable aqua tablets. 
You use two of these tablets per one liter or one quart of water and you let them wait 30 minutes and then you got drinkable water. Now of course you could always just use this to boil your water. All right, moving on to the next side pouch here. I have two small survival bracelets. This one is a watch and paracord. It has a Celsius thermometer, a compass, a ferro rod, and a whistle. This one also has the compass, the ferro rod, the whistle, and there's also fishing gear in here. I don't really know what kind of fishing gear, but it's in there if I ever needed it. This is just a disposable hooded poncho. In case it's raining, you need to keep dry. Maybe I would be using this tarp I have laid down here as a, as a tarp shelter. I wouldn't be able to use it as a poncho, so it's better to have a, a backup. I have two emergency blankets. Looks like it just came undone here. So now they're both unwrapped. I have, I have had to use these before in a camping situation where I was underprepared, so I know they, they work pretty good. So you can use them to keep warm. You can also use them on like a, a lean-to shelter to reflect fire heat back at you. I have a few finger or hand warmers here just in case your, your fingers or toes are really frozen, you need to warm them up. You can also stick these in uh, sleeping bags and uh, keep you a little extra warm. All right, so that does it to the, for the side pouches. We'll move on to this little top pouch here. So I have a few different knives in here. This is just kind of a generic Swiss Army thing. This is just a spring assisted survival knife. There's a, there's a bus dropping off kids, you can hear the beeping. But anyway, I got this tiny little knife by mistake. I guess I didn't read the small print or something. I thought I was getting a little bit bigger skinning knife, but this is so tiny you couldn't skin anything with this. Although it is full tang, so it would probably be useful for maybe some fine wood carving. I haven't actually had a chance to use this yet. This is a little multiple use uh, tool here. You can use it to kind of break car windows with that kind of motion. Next in here, this is the main uh, ferro rod that I have in my pack. This one's pretty good. I've, I've used it, just practiced with it a few times. And while I'm thinking about it, you see how there's black, black coating on this, and then on that side is where you actually scrape away the black coating to get to the ferro serum underneath. So I've heard that people sometimes think, they think that these don't work, but you actually have to take the black coating off first. Next in here, just some spare batteries for the headlight here. These are actually the only spare batteries I have in the pack. Most of what I have in here doesn't actually use batteries. That was, I did that to try to save weight. There's four little boxes of a uh, Strike Anywhere matches. All right, Storm. Storm matches. These actually will burn underwater. I've seen videos of it. I haven't done it myself. I mean, they're really expensive. I don't want to waste any. They're kind of for a survival situation, but I'm sure one day I'll be tempted and try one. I have two little waterproof lighters here. I did have to fill them with lighter fluid, but they're windproof and they seal up, so they're waterproof.
These have excellent reviews, so glad I got these. So this is a solar powered battery bank. It's a 4,000 milliamp capacity. Comes with a little cord here so you can charge your phone and it's solar powered so in theory if it's sunny or whatever you should be able to continuously recharge your phone so if i'm out surviving for a long period of time i'll need to sharpen my knives have a whetstone japanese now i don't actually i'm not very experienced with sharpening knives so I'm planning on uh, doing some knife sharpening videos. It'll be a teach myself in the process. So that does it for this pouch. We'll move on to this lower pouch here. This is the food pouch. I have nine of these. These are meal pack, complete protein, concentrated food bar, quick energy, uh, sesame lemon flavor. These aren't very good. I've ate one or two of them. I didn't like them, but in a survival situation they'll do. I also have 10 days worth of survival tabs. Butterscotch flavored, gluten-free, non-GMO. Supposed to have all your essential vitamins and minerals. I'm not gonna take all that food out there. All right, up next. Oh. We got a big old roll of Gorilla Tape. You gotta have your hat and your gloves. This is just a marine watch cap. And these are Wells Lamont Finsulate gloves and you can use them with touch screens so you can still use your phone with these. This is a head Head wrap balaclava in case it's super freezing out, you need to keep your entire head warm. Extra socks. These are Spanish military issue. They're a cotton wool blend. I forget the ratio. I've worn them a few times. They're pretty good. I like them. All right, here are some. Uh, Long Johns, Long Underwear Base Layer. They're 30% uh, merino wool, 70% polyester, because cotton is terrible to have when you're in a survival situation. You need to be active and moving around. Have the matching uh, shirt. All right, this is the main survival shelter I would have on me. It is a two-person emergency thermal shelter, eight feet by 10 feet, accommodates two adults. Waterproof, windproof, and reusable, use in any weather condition. Let's reposition the pack here for the last pouch. All right, we will start with I have a waterproof map of Ohio, because I live in Ohio. Northern, Southern. It's always good to have an idea of where you're going. I don't have all of Ohio memorized, so. This is Paracord. Now when I bought this, it said it was uh, 500 paracord but looking at this it's so it's so thin and there's so little strands in here I can't really imagine this being a 500 paracord I'm not sure uh, let me know what you think in the comment section is this 500 paracord next up is a little radio it is hand crank and solar power just like the flashlight you got a small antenna you can use this to get weather information or anything being broadcast on the emergency station. It's always good to know that kind of stuff. This is a real uh, fancy compass here. It's the type that opens up. Honestly, I don't know how to use these. 
they're just it's just suggested by a lot of survivalists that you do get these sort of compasses and learn how to use them which I have not yet done but this is certainly more reliable than the compasses on the little survival bands here next up are just some uh, men's vitamin supplements because you never know how long you'll be out there get to stay healthy as much as you can and if somehow I'm out there and I get an infection, I have these Christopher's Infection Formula Caps. Let's see, what do they have in them? It is a proprietary blend of black walnut leaf, golden seal root, bungleweed herb, plantain leaf, marshmallow root, and lobelia herb. Honestly, I've only heard of golden seal, and I already know that has uh, antibacterial and antibiotic uh, properties so I'm sure this works pretty good I have a few survival tins in here the first one is a pack of three wire snares for snaring little critters in the most extreme survival situations if I ran out of all my backup food and I was starving I don't know why I closed that Next one is a fishing gear tin. Has just your most basic stuff in there. Some weights, bobbers, fake bait, swivels, hooks, fishing line. I'm, I'm not an expert fisherman. I'm not sure what kind of fishing you can actually do in the winter. Maybe you're good at fishing, maybe you know. Let me know in the comment section if you know something about winter fishing. I don't want to open this. These are magnesium shavings for fire starting. You may have seen my ferro rod fire starting video. I did use a little bit of these. They work very well. All right, this is sewing gear in case clothes get teared or something gets teared and you need to do some on-site repairs. This is my sleeping bag. It's a tack bivy. These have an excellent reputation, my survivalists. Great, great reviews. Now this is another piece of fishing equipment. These are automated fishing reels. Um, you rig them up and the fish bites and it go and it wheels the fish in for you. Honestly, I haven't uh mess with these yet I'm kind of waiting for maybe spring or summer but hey if you have used these and you have experience with them uh, let me know in the comment section how they work I'm very interested about these because it'd be nice like maybe you go to set up camp and you come back and you got fish waiting for you All right, the next item here is some waterproof insulated uh, winter pants now I assume that I would already be wearing a winter coat, but I may be lacking with uh, leg wear, so better to have something with that. Here's a collapsible water bladder, it is one liter. I've used this in uh, backpacking trips previously. This is the knife. This is a Schrade SCHF9 survival knife. Now, I've seen videos of people use this to straight up chop logs in half and then they can also use the inner edge here for uh, some fine wood carving, wood feathering type of things. I haven't actually used this a whole lot yet. I'd like to use it a bit and then do a complete review video on it. Guys, it looks like we are down to the very last item, but this is possibly one of the most important items. It is the first aid hygiene pack. Now, it probably took me a week to put this together, watching other videos, seeing what other people were doing, reading articles. I wanted to make it as lightweight as possible, but there was so much I wanted to include in it, so I think I got it down. All right, guys, I went ahead and adjusted the camera so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Here is camp soap. 
Supposedly you can use this to clean anything at all, like dishes, your hands, your hair, whatever. These aren't, this is Normalite powder you can use if you're dehydrated. You just mix it with water and you can quickly rehydrate yourself. I only have two of these. There's some skin lotion in case you get a cracked skin because it'll be winter out. In that department, I also have Vaseline, which you can also use for fire starting if you coat it with, uh, if you coat a cotton ball in it. I did not pack a toothbrush or toothpaste instead. I packed Colgate Wisps, two packs of them. We also have Fisherman's Friends. These are excellent at uh, suppressing coughs, clearing your sinuses. My mom's been using these since I was a little kid and I've never stopped using them. Sudafed, day and night, may catch a cold in the cold. And I, bought a, I bought a few packs of these. These are biodegradable cleaning wipes. It's a pack of 30, they're unscented. This is just some basic first aid stuff. There's medications, uh, some band-aids, some cleaning wipes, also some uh, mole, also some mole skins for your uh, for blisters. Also have some gold bond powder. I have a gauze wrap here and here. Uh, I forget the name of them, but it's the the clip type of wrap. This is an Israeli bandage, six inch hemorrhage control bandage. Useful to have in a trauma situation. I bought this dental medic kit specifically for me because I wasn't always the best at going to the dentist when I was younger and uh, now I'm paying for it. These are uh, two packs of facial tissues actually. Now it was MCQ Bushcraft who suggested these because they have multiple uses. You can use them for tissues, uh, toilet paper and also as a gauze when you need to absorb blood on that subject I do have some quick clocked clotting sponge hand sanitizer Burt's beeswax chapstick medical tape eye drops this is a snake bite kit uh, I'm not sure why this is in here I don't think there's a such thing as snow snakes or snakes that come out in Winter, yeah, I can probably take this out. The very last thing in the kit is a fine pair of tweezers. Okay, so this will do it for the winter survival bag dump. I'm confident I would be able to survive for a while in the wilderness, of course supplemented with bushcraft and survival skills because gear is not everything. So guys, please make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and check out today's new shoutouts vlog. Alright, that's all. Till next time, take care guys, have a good one.